We live in a digital transformation age. Crypto is a currency and it's part of our future. It's going to grow. Hello everyone, I'm Kim and this is Dreambox, a show that's going to take you to unravel people's journey to their dreams. Today I'm here with a very, very cool guest. Some of you might know him. He has been the living legend in the entertainment industry. Hi, Piat. Hi, Pim. How are you? I'm good. Am I a dinosaur? No, you're not a okay, dinosaur. I'm not. You're a living legend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, allow me to ask you to introduce yourself formally to everyone here. I think back during MTV days, um, for the people in the region, they probably know me as Ad. But I actually have a full name. It's Asada Panishko. So, um, what's your dream, Piat? What's my dreams? I think being um, when you talk about dreams, it's like very subjective. So my dreams right now is I'm I'm living my dream. You know, um, I I have good health. I have a good family. I'm able to uh, look after my parents. Um, I have great friends and. I love traveling, but I mean, uh, unfortunately, with the pandemic and everything, um, it teaches you to have uh, a silver lining in spending more time with yourself. You know, each stage of your life, you have different dreams. Did you ever dream of getting to where you are right now? I think I've always had sort of an idea where I wanted to go um, in terms of like wanting to challenge myself. I didn't know where it would take me, but I think those challenges through life have brought me through different stages of, uh, of life in my career or um, being able to travel, see things, go to places and have like the opportunities that I've been given throughout life. Beforehand, um, you were pretty much, you were born in the States and then you were raised in the States, but then your life actually started in Asia. I have like a whole life when I was living in the US um, and then coming over to Asia was another chapter. So tell us more about that chapter of your life when you started to get into the industry, the entertainment industry. So when I came over to Asia, I was looking for an air ticket back home because my parents sent me here and I was left without a ticket going back. So it was a one-way ticket. <laughs> it was a one-way <laughs> ticket. So um, previously to that, when I would come to Thailand, I would have like modeling agencies get in touch for me to do some work, side work. So I'm like, okay, this is the easiest way to go back home. That's how I started in the entertainment industry. It's like, I was just looking for money to go back. But at the time, one thing led to another. So it was, it just snowballed. I ended up doing so much in the entertainment industry. It was way before social media. So the world was a lot smaller and I and there was less people in the industry. So how long have you been in the industry now? Um, it's been some time. I think it's over 20 years now. I don't know it's like if it's um, more maxing towards 30 years, which is pretty much telling you guys my age. Looking back, what, what are the key things that stand out for you? Key things in the region in Southeast Asia would be being a VJ, which is basically a video jockey, a host on MTV. So um, I was a video jockey for MTV for about 11 to 12 years. I was there for like a really long time. I'm so passionate about music. I had always had this drive to want to work for this one company, which is MTV, because MTV is a global brand. And at the time it was like the place to be on. So it's like, I'm like, if um, the epitome of being a host, being a video jockey, being a VJ would have to be MTV. So that's what I was always striving, striving for when I was in the entertainment industry. It's like, I need to be a VJ on this channel and this channel alone. You came to Thailand and then you, you flew over to Singapore wanting to start a life pretty much again, of, you know, like establishing yourself again. How do you really um, translate your confidence um, and your self-esteem and all of these stuff that made you you? I think you need to be able to humble yourself too because when I crossed over from Thailand to Singapore, even though I had experience in Thailand, I had really good mentors and producers who actually called me out to say, even though you have experience, but this is a new market, you're still not good enough. So I think that's, um, that was a challenge for me at the time. 
So with COVID and the, all of this pandemic that's going on around us right now, how does all of this affect you? Um, I think it's affected everyone. I mean, obviously it affected um, me personally when we were hit with the first wave because it's like a feeling of hopelessness. You don't know what to do. You don't know what's going to happen and where this is going to go. So I think you're like stuck in this limbo and um, and it just makes you feel quite depressed and sad, which I think a lot of people were going through, are still going through. There was also a silver lining to it. There's more time to kind of research things that you would never um, think about before the world of cryptocurrency. What did you find interesting about crypto? We live in a digital transformation age. Everything transforms really fast. And then to understand digital transformation is to understand that you need to understand what is going on and what's relevant and what's the future. So I kind of use this as sort of like a benchmark or just like an example of how I see crypto coming into, um, into play in people's lives because crypto is a currency that is very relevant with the times, really relevant with digital transformation, and it's part of our future. It's gonna grow. So it's either we understand it or we don't understand it. So I think that was part of me coming into um, coming into light about it. And I think what was really important for me at the time was kind of, okay, well, now that I understand it, um, I like to know whether or not there are, you know, uh, trading platforms or currency exchanges in, in Asia or like locally in Thailand. So I stumbled upon like, you know, some YouTube um, clips and everything. And I stumbled upon Marcus, Marcus Lim. He's yeah. the CEO and founder of Zipmex. So as I was watching his interviews, um, it kind of made me feel comfortable uh, and relate because of the fact that probably because I lived in Singapore for so long and Marcus is, you know, in Singapore. So that's how I came into the know of, um, of Zipmex at the time. So as an artist as well, how, how do you relate to um, the artist world and the digital world? Because in the olden days, you see art as something that you create by hand. Whereas now, there are so many digital arts. I feel that we are really in a very good place because I think what has happened in the, in the past is that artists, um, whether they're, you know, um, they're artists who sing or artists who, um, who create um, art of work, they're always pretty much passing through a middleman in terms of, um, of the ownership of their art. And where I find digital being very promising in the crypto world is NFTs, which means non-fungible tokens. And I think this is really exciting because what it allows is it allows people who are artists or even people who aren't artists to actually have ownership to their work. And then they have the right to sell their work uh, directly. And that comes and that kind of uh, connects with the whole uh, decentralized um, theme of crypto. So what did you find about all of these um, you know, bridging lifestyle and finance and then bridging technology all together in one big triangle? How did you come about all of this? I think it's like one step at a time. It's like baby steps and um, you don't get everything at once. You kind of slowly get it and you, you slowly get it and you might still not get it, um, the whole entire thing, but you have people along the way and there's like, um, you're, you, you can educate yourself online as well um, because it's ever growing. And um, crypto on one hand is very volatile, but I realized that um, when you have a platform, a platform like Zipmex, basically um, whatever platforms are out there, but Zipmex being that it's a regional platform, an Asian platform, you can go into Zipmex and there are support for you. I mean, you know, there's like weekly updates, content, whereas like it actually, um, it actually talks about what's happening on a weekly basis. So then you're not lost. You actually have someone being able to relay and answer um, the concerns you have. And then you have like, you know, the CS, which is customer service, or, you know, uh, the community that helps you out along the way as well. So I think these things, when they're in place, then you feel more comfort, uh, more comfortable and it doesn't feel as scary because it shouldn't. So just wanting to share this out with the people who are watching at home, what are the top tips that you would, you would give to people who are wanting to dip their toes into the space? 
Definitely don't be afraid. Know that you can, you know, dip your toes like um, in baby steps because I think that's the best way to do it. I think um, it can feel a bit intimid in intimidating. That's how I felt. But I think once you're able to kind of pace yourself, then you feel more comfortable. I think what has helped me is understanding that I don't need to get it right away. I just slowly need to get it. So that's one of the tips, probably one of the main tips that I would, you know, tell the viewers. Thank you so much for spending your time here on Dreambox with us, Piat. It was very insightful to have you here and I am sure it's very inspirational for the viewers at home as well. So thank you so much for being here. And for our viewers at home, thank you so much for tuning in today and stay up to date with all of our news and announcements from our social media. And this is it for our Dreambox today. Catch us later in our next episode. Who are we going to have on our Dreambox? Stay tuned to find out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.